Hey guys, welcome back to AFK Journey. In today's video, we're going to go through my King Croker guide. Now we're going to do a couple things. We're going to look at Endgame's teams um, from some very reliable website sources uh, so that if you are in the Endgame or Wailing and you do have a bunch of Mythic Plus characters, you can have that resource uh, to go ahead and sort of form your best teams. However, then I also want to dive deep into where I think most people are at, which is progressing through the game and how you can actually really maximize your score against King Croker based on formations and not just the units but also the positioning because he has some very important effects that you've got to take into account with positioning in this battle so first of all let's go let's just cover the uh the whales in the end game firstly i'll give you guys some resources that you can go to now vatra is the dude who owns this website it is a ukrainian website but you can translate to english it's a great website it goes through some formations for the end game and stuff like that we also have analytica who have been collaborating uh with vatra on this one and they've made a visual guide which we'll go through in a sec and then the other one we have this is for more beginners as well is uh pride win because they do go in for deep write-ups into a bunch of different characters if you're missing characters they have a bunch of sub options and stuff like that they go in depth into a lot of characters whereas these two sites are more catered towards that end game experience and like i said they made this this amazing infographic uh with all the bosses but for this one we are going to focus in on the king croker and we're going to go through some of the king croker teams and have have a quick chat about them i'm not going to spend too much time um because once again i don't think many people are at this and then we will go through the free to play side to things low spenders and progression so when we look at teams like these Team A is best team. Uh, team B is what they found to be the second best team, very close to Team A. And Team C is one that still works, but not quite as great. And then we do have some teams over here that don't have any Celestials or Hypergenes. And essentially, when you're looking at these teams, if you're looking at Corrin, uh, you're looking at Rainy, you're looking at Merrily, they need a Mythic Plus to be in this team. And that's essentially where we're at. So that's why they are in here. Like I said, it's not applicable to most people. Most people are probably using Cecilia still because she's going to be their highest descended DPS in most cases because of her accessibility through the shop and stuff like that besides that you do have Odie who is still a fantastic option and as we go across here you get into some more free-to-play options using things like Kruger and stuff like that but what I want to do now is like I said you guys can go ahead I'll leave links to all of these resources so you guys can go ahead and get that um, and you can look deeper into it if you're at that stage but because I think a lot of people are not yet at that stage I want to talk about progressing through the fight depending on where you are now there's a few key things in King Croker's kit that we really have to look at. Um, the, the first one is this one. Uh, releases a magic bubble to defeats an enemy. It hits. Uh, it's it, like, it just happens at 15, 33, and, and 50, 30, 15, 35, and 55 seconds into battle. This one is very important because it is a one-shot. Yes, Thorin can revive. Nothing else can immune it. Thorin is the best unit for this, and that is just the way it's going to be. If you don't have Thorin, you are going to be doing less damage in King Croker because he's going to be killing your units uh, instead of having Thorin with the two lives. The other one is this one one that launches the aoe bomb these are the two most important ones that i want to focus on because this is what affects your positioning now when we take a look at optimal teams in the early game i really like this kind of team now i am using the uh the haste artifact as well i just like this one uh in most fights there are some situations which you you can get you want to use other ones but in general this fight I do like the haste one if you've unlocked it if you haven't unlocked it you can go with the attack speed one and you'll be perfectly fine now there are different ways you can play this there are many different ways you can play it um you can run Thorin in the front row I kind of like Smokey because Smokey then gets a few attacks helps Thorin uh stay chunked up also helps Smokey's range when you're running multiple melee uh so that you can heal more allies in in the melee range and stuff like that so I like Smokey in the front you can run Thorin in the front depending on the situation now as we move past that you can see here I have Kruger up here now sometimes you, you might want to put Kruger back further so that Thorin Thorin takes the first bomb. So when we look at that bomb that he uses, it's a one hit, one hit kill. So often you want uh, Thorin to take that because Thorin dies and then he revives and then he can die again. And then you've still got your, your damage deals in there and you've got Kruger in there. What I actually do in this circumstance, and if you haven't tried this and you're struggling for damage, definitely try this. And then I'll talk about different subunits that you can use as well. But Kruger... My Kruger is very low ascension. So the problem happens that after Thorin dies two times um, to the one shots and the Kroker for changes his focus target to uh, Kruger, my Kruger dies to normal attacks. 
So he dies to normal attacks, and then I get one shot on the third one on one of my other characters. So by me putting Kruger here, his defense shred lasts the entire battle. So he, he can go in there, and what he does from this position is he gets the aggro first up. He can survive until the first bomb. He gets one tapped, but the main thing that he does, especially at low ascension, is apply the shred. And so that's already on there. And that then allows my Thorin, who can survive all the basic attacks, to live up until the next um the, the next two bombs so he gets bombed twice and no one no one else dies to the bomb except for uh kruger and then my thorn so that is that strat now the other thing in this you'll notice is grouping so you can and once again this is just because where i am and if i was at a different stage and you might be at a different stage your formation can change according to what's happening in the fight and you've just got to sort of feel it out so the reason i have odie and Cecilia grouped really closely to my Smokey is because I want his AoE water bomb to land on them. Because if it lands in the melee range with with my um, my Kruger and my Thorin, and eventually I'll have Mr. Carlisle there as well, then it, it, it can kill them faster. And once again, I have that issue with cycling the bombs. So I want these three together so that the bombs go there. Otherwise, I could do something like this. Uh, and as long as the, the, these two are within three tiles of my Smokey, um, they're still going to be healed after his first ult, but then they won't be in range of the bomb. But the problem with that means then his bomb will be going into melee range. However, if you have better invested melee heroes, you might want to do the spread so that it does go into melee range and that might help you more. Like I said, there is no one size fits all for this stuff. It just depends on the situation and what you have and how difficult the boss is for you, whether you're just entering a new phase of it or whether you're, you know, pushing to get that 100%. Now, another unit you can use to up. Like I said, if you don't have Thorin, unfortunately Thorin is like the one, like honestly, Smokey is super important too, but Thorin is the most important. If you don't have him, you just you can just run whatever you want in that slot, whether it be another DPS, another tank to get hit first. It's just a real sketchy thing without a Thorin, unfortunately. The, the boss fight, like eventually everyone should have a Thorin. RNG is a bitch, I know, but once you get him, put him in, you can run an Antandra, a Brutus, something like that, but nothing else is going to get that second life, which is such an important thing to do. Um, but you could also maybe run another DPS uh, in that situation as well. And then Smokey, if you don't have Smokey, uh, your your main substitutes, you can probably use a Hewan. Hewan is going to have that sustained healing. Uh, and depending on how offensive your team is, uh, you can also run yourself with a Coco. Now, past that, another strat you can do is running Coco with the Smokey to get some extra mitigation. Like I mentioned before, how my Kruger dies really quick, but I prefer the strategy of letting Kruger die to the first bomb as what I do because Kruger ends up giving me more more damage amplification or more total damage from my experimentation than running the Coco with her attack buff. I just find Kruger's Shred gives me more throughput in general and gets me to higher scores, but Coco is definitely an option if you want to play it. So now what I want to do is I want to show you guys the difference in a couple formations. So I'm going to put Kruger in here. And the first thing I want to show you is what happens if I put Kruger back and I allow Thorin to take the first bomb. So that's what I'm going to show you in this one. So let's jump in and take a look at this just so you guys can visualize what's actually happening so now Thorin is in the frontmost position and Thorin is going to be getting the the focus from that first bomb or he should be sometimes some weird stuff does happen in this stuff and he, he doesn't target the way I think he will uh, but he should so now you can see here he's using that bomb and he's one tapped the Thorin now Thorin is back up perfect let's keep going so as you can see Smokey the best sustain unit for this he, just, he doesn't get interrupted in this fight as long as he's got the throughput you're perfectly fine so now we're still dealing more damage and then he's going to do the bomb once again, on those back row units, because I don't want him hitting the front, and now he's killed my Thorin. Thorin is completely dead, and this is where this team runs into issues, because now my Kruger, even though he's doing all right now, you can see we did lose the Smokey. That little swipe, like sometimes we won't lose Smokey, and that's a key difference, but that swipe is what really cost me there, because that swipe tapped the Kruger, whereas Thorin wouldn't get tapped by that swipe, and we'd still have a tank in there for us. So as you can see there, that was the issue. So what happens is and you can test this as well like maybe you putting Kruger here he still targets Thorin sometimes the targeting is a little bit funny but for me this works perfectly fine if you had to you can just move Thorin back a spot but what we do here is now and once again notice that those bombs were never going into melee range because I had my ranged units 
all grouped up. So now what I'm going to do in this one is put Kruger up. And the idea here is that Kruger takes the first bomb and dies because Kruger's damage throughput isn't that great. He doesn't contribute a ton of damage to the team because he is so low ascension. He is there purely for his defense shred capabilities. And he's about to turn here. You can see he's turned. He's going to use his bomb. And there goes my Kruger. Kruger is dead. But that is good for me because even though I've lost one character already, whereas the other way I haven't, it comes back to me later in the fight. So now we're going through, we're dealing out damage. And once again, there is RNG like that last time when Smokey died. Uh, sometimes you can avoid that like, you know, Smokey doesn't die. But there, there goes the Thorin on the first death. Now we still have Mr. Carla right front and center there dealing the damage. So here we go. Unfortunately, once again, we did lose that Smokey. So my Smokey, once again, that's an RNG thing uh, going down. But that time you could see we did actually keep the Thorin alive through the swipe and it allowed us to keep going. So if I had a bit better RNG on that uh, Smokey, Smokey can stay alive. And that's how I actually got my best score in it. Whereas in the previous run, uh, you could see that because the swipe killed my Kruger, even if the Smokey was alive, everyone would have been dead in two seconds from the basic attacks hitting them. So those are the key things you really want to look for in it. As for leveling the, the characters and the levels on your characters, uh, I find primarily I want to keep my two DPS as the highest level if you only have two high level slots. Then past that, if I had a third high level slot, if I could, like, how far are we? Yeah, now we're, we're, we're a ton of essence away, but my next one would be, it, it depends on testing, but most likely in this comp, it would be my Smokey to guarantee that Smokey lives that bomb towards the end and keeps healing and allows me to have more damage throughput and basically another whole cycle of damage. But even though, but because Smokey can survive, maybe I could make Kruger my higher level unit and then maybe I could leave Thorin to be the first one to kill so I have more damage throughput that way. It just depends on the situation. But normally putting your Cecilia for most people, if you have a Mythic Plus, um, you know, Merrily or something like that at this stage, you can definitely slap her in or another damage dealer that you just feel does more damage than Cecilia due to your ascensions you can slap her in but your two damage dealers are the ones that I do like leaving in the higher level slots just because you need that damage throughput uh, to get through the battle now once again this is in the stage of trying to push for that last 10% to clear a boss once you get into a new section of the boss you guys know how it is trying to get like 10-20% is a struggle and that's when you've got to get more creative throw anything in I often uh, when I get into a new stage of a boss uh, i normally put uh odie in my back row and i put this one on so that odie can get ults off as fast as possible i leave thorin in the team to let the dock dot tick as long as possible and just see how we go but that is a cheesy strat for when you get into a new difficulty of boss which i don't think i'm going to be able to clear this stage of croaker until i get one more character into that 101 range but we will see how we go but that is my general tips for progressing through king croaker the two key things that you want to manage with this character is the grouping of your units to control where his water bomb is going to land so that it doesn't disrupt your weaker units. And this is going to be custom depending on who you are and what your team looks like because of ascensions and stuff like that levels as well. Then the next thing you really want to focus on is who his bomb is landing on. Like I said, for me currently, having the first bomb land on my Kruger is actually the best situation for me because Kruger otherwise dies to a basic swipe later on in the battle and leaves my whole back row vacant, like available to attack. Whereas having Thorin um, stay alive it means that Thorin can still protect my back row later in the fight. So that's just some suggestions. Like I said, with this stuff, there is no one size fits all in the early game as you're progressing. You've just got to play by your account and feel it out. But hopefully that gives you some tips that you guys can really take action on and hopefully get some better scores. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you have an awesome day and I look forward to seeing the next one. Cheers.